I have to be honest, when it comes to makeup, I don't know Jack. The brushes, the lotions, the potions, what goes where, I don't know. So there's this one group of people that I have nothing but admiration for, and they are the drag queens. The way they move, the way they walk, the way they talk, the sexiness, the sassiness, the humour, that's all I want to be. So today, I've invited a drag family, the House of Miss Joachim, to come and tell us everything that we want to know about the drag world. And at the end of the show, they will actually help me find my drag persona and help me get in touch with my feminine side. I'm Olinda, this is Original, and we're kicking off Season 2 with the Drag Queens! Let's go! Hi, I'm Oli, and this is Original, and today I would like to introduce you the family of fabulous people from the house of Miss Jokin. We have Vandal Miss Jokin. Yes, darling. And we have Ariana Konda. Hi. Farah Shamrock. Hi. And Dahlia Rose. Hello. So. Hey, girl. Hi, hi, hi. hi. Hello. Hello. So, I would like to. There's so much that I want to know, and there's so much that I don't know. Tell mm. me everything. What do you want to know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there are things that I know. Okay, like I know the basic stuff about um, dragging up and being being a drag queen and mm. all that. But what are the stuff that you know that the public don't really know? Well, I think that they only just see us on the surface. Like um, they think they we just want to dress up as females and stuff like that. But they don't know that this take a lot of work. This take hours. This take how many hours? This, I think, like a decade, 10 years. You <laughs> take 10 years and still look like this. <laughs> That's true. But, um, you know, I only take one hour and I still look fabulous. We put in a lot of effort. You know, we are, we are all men. Mm -hmm. We are men in a dress. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we have to block our brows because we have bushy eyebrows, we have to shave. Yeah, and the costumes, like people like this, they have to like corset to get the shape right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. everything is like mm. big, over the top. Yeah. Yes. I mean, drag, drag is all about that. It's mm. all about... Being fierce and Correct. Yeah, of course. out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. We like to intimidate people, but yeah. actually we are lovely people. <laughs> how, how did the very first like experience happen? And first try experience, wanna... Yeah. Mm, okay, <laughs> actually you see inspiration is in movies, in dramas, and you find it like, oh I wanna be like that, because when you're a boy, you're scared. Because you're timid, you know, sometimes you're not so outspoken. And the moment you get into drag, you get into a totally different character. You find confidence in yourself that you never know. I think because once you put like the, the wig and everything, you just see yourself in the mirror and it's like, oh my god, you're a totally different person and you, you act differently. Different. For my case, I have been feminine or a fe like, a I feel like a woman since young. So I like wigs, you know, the building blocks was my heels. You know, the blanket when I used to sleep was my dress. So I was like that till the day when I saw Mr. Bean animated TV. It was Mr. Bean animated series. It's one of the episodes where Mr. Bean had this big idol called Roxy. She got big breasts yeah. and then yeah, yeah. gorgeous lips. So when I was young, I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I replayed, I replayed that part. Like seven times, her entrance, everyone would go like, oh, and I'll be like, yes! And I'll be like, I look like her. So it started from there. So I got my opportunity um, when um, Gia, Gia Munaji, called me up, and then she said that, you know what, you should try out for her story. Her story mm -hmm. is one of um, my, um, which I'm residenting in right now. Okay. So yeah, for her story party. And then from that day, it started off. So yeah, it's been around three years. And you, Mama, <laughs> share with Mother! <laughs> yes. Um, I remember my teacher gave me a dress and asked me, asked me to tell my mom to actually like alter it to, to you know, to, to fit me. But I, I'm like, oh my god, I don't have the guts to do it. So I just took safety pin. I'm like, teacher na. I already asked my aunt, mother to alter. I was like, your mother just put safety pin on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my god, when the real day came, I, I, I think it was Rachel Media, if I'm not mistaken. I'm like, oh my god. I look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I look pretty as <laughs> um, Oh, but my auntie uh, saw the picture. She she screwed me up like, oh, I, I, I had a very terrible moment after that. So after that, I went on. My career progressed on from there. Like, I ran away from Singapore after that to so Canada. Go? I went to Canada in 2011. And also, I, I realized that, you know, in a foreign land, representing your country, Venom is joking is actually a national flower already. Yes. So, you know, you put up in drag and you are representing your people and you go out there, you make your people proud. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I uh, came up with the name Venom is Joachim. Then I came back to Singapore and, 
you know, it just went on and on and on. I'm pretty sure that the journey that you took was never easy. Mm. Oh. So, yeah. what was... are the, difficult, the difficulties that you faced taking this path that you've chosen? I think for my case, I think most of us is, um, it hurts, not say it hurts, it affects everyone. Not just family, friends and so, and relationship wise too. So, um, I think based on family, I think some of us, um, they don't understand why we do this and against religion, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, there will always be feuds within our family itself. And then for friends, some of them, like, they're not into feminine people and stuff like that. And mm. sometimes they can't handle the overness that we are having. Community-wise, outside the public, I think it's opening up slowly. Sorry. It's opening up slowly. Um, but there are still hate out there. And then people who think that, oh, you are wrong. You know, you're, you're, you should not dress as a woman. You are a man. Act like a man. Mm -hmm. Walk like a man. When men don't wear makeup. Stuff like that is still going on. Yeah. So what is one thing that... Singaporeans don't know about drag queens. I think Singapore um, needs to know that yeah, drag is not exp and it's yeah. not cheap. Yeah. And then, um, if you're thinking that drag is something you do for fun, it's actually a source of business. Mm. All these are investments. Investments. So I think, moving forward, I think Singaporeans who are interested in getting drag queens or performers like us um, should have in mind that these are quality performances. It's mm. not something like, oh, we're just going to get a man in a dress and then pay him $100 and then we can do a show. Yeah. No! <laughs> they respect us. Uh, don't touch our hair. Yeah. Yes. Don't touch our face. Mm -hmm. Do they do don't, that? Oh, no. my oh, yes. oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. 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 Uh, <laughs> why so modu? Yeah. Okay, so that being said, mm -hmm. how Ooh. can drag educate and change our society? <laughs> I think right now, especially in Singapore, we're living in quite a conservative country. Yeah. Whereby the older generation, the heterosexuals one, like even our parents per se, they're not so open to these kind of things. My mom, I love her to death. Mm. I just want her to know that I'm happier this way when I'm performing. Mm. Um, she ha has that mentality whereby gays or queer people or even drag queens is somehow a sin a, uh, not just a sin we are on a lower level than mm. normal human beings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also i think also like some parents will take time yeah i mean like my mom at first when she got to know that i, I do this she turned the whole house upside down and stuff and stuff like that so but it'll take years uh to make her realize that i'm doing this solely because uh it's passion um it's just performing and it pays my bills yeah. That's it. and also to educate these girls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all that being said, it's my turn now to be a fully empowered woman. So mm -hmm. make me strong, make me fierce. Yes! Yes! yes. 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 We're gonna drag yes. you up! Yes. 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 Ladies, it's all up to you! <laughs> yes. My face is in your hands! Yes, girls! Let's, let's, go. let's do this! Okay, so. so let's go, girls. Make me the woman I was meant to be. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna remove your makeup. Alright. Your everyday makeup. Mm -hmm. I don't have any makeup, I woke up like this. Oh, I forgot to ask about the dress. Uh -huh. Slang. Slang? Oh, the different terms. What are terms. the slangs? Tell the me about terms. it. Okay. okay, like Singaporean, we like Nya. Yeah. All that. Nya is like, like, hey girl. girl. Nya. Nya. Touch garbage. <laughs> yeah. What's so, touch, touch garbage, garbage happen? <laughs> When I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just sitting beside the garbage and then they were saying some shitty thing. I was like, Touch garbage la this one. So it happened there. Yeah, so, so, yeah. Olinda, what's your drag name? <gasps> oh, yeah, you know. Yes, the you know like Oleander what? What's your second name? Oleander Blue. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oleander Blue. Mm. Must be one big caption. Oh, <laughs> I have a diploma, okay? So, 
Exactly. Even have, with diploma also, you have that. <laughs> <laughs> you just read yourself, darling. I'm sorry. Alright, we're gonna do the final oh. touches. Yes, girl. Are you ready? Come on, put it under. You have to put this in. Thank you for watching our original. Goodbye! Bye.